Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our virtual town hall panel. Uh, this panel is sponsored by the City of Steamboat Springs and Route County in partnership with the Steamboat Pilot in today. My name is Lisa Slitchman and I'm the editor of the newspaper and I will be serving as your moderator. Uh, today's panel is one that I think will really resonate with members of our community. Um, today, we're going to be talking about how people can take care of themselves and how um, mentally, physically, emotionally during COVID-19. Um, we know we have a lot of, we, most everyone is at home, hopefully, um, except for our essential workers. And um, we've been doing this for a while now. And we know that people um, really want to know how they can um, stay resilient during this time. And so we have a fantastic panel this morning for you that are gonna answer questions from the community about this topic. So I am gonna introduce um, each one and if you guys would just wave um, and then people would know who you are. So first up, we have Steve Swanson, astronaut. That's kind of a cool thing to be an astronaut. Sorry, that was kind of cool to say out loud. <laughs> Secondly, Dr. Kristen Race, author and owner of Mindful Life Today, Dr. Phaedra Fagley with Minds in Motion, and Rebecca Williams, personal trainer and owner of Mountain Fit. So again, thank you all for being here with us today. Um, so let's begin. Um, I basically just want you guys to introduce yourself to the audience, uh, tell a little bit about yourself and, um, and what, what you do. So let's start with Kristen. Okay, now you should be able to hear me. Thanks so much, Lisa. Uh, my name is Kristen Race. I'm the founder of Mindful Life. I have lived in Steamboat Springs for the better part of, oh, I don't even wanna say how many years, but I moved here originally in the early 90s and have raised my family here for the last 14 years or so. And I founded Mindful Life 13 years ago here in Steamboat Springs. And we now work with school districts, city governments, corporations, medical professionals all over the world. My work is really based in three main pillars, uh, one being neuroscience and how we can impact the way our brains function. Uh, the second being mindfulness and how we can use mindfulness practices to strengthen key structures in our brain. And the third being that uh, the belief that small changes can make a big difference. So I like to create a lot of simple practices that people can integrate into what they already do. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Kristen. Um, next up, Phaedra, please tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Phaedra Fagley. I'm a family practitioner. I graduated from residency in 2000 and have been in Steamboat since 2007. Recently, I made a change from my family, um, the family practice office that I was at for 13 years to work at Minds in Motion. And um, Minds in Motion is an integrative clinic. We have myself, a naturopathic physician, um, two psychiatric nurse practitioners and four therapists. And we work um, together to try to help um, mental health, but also I focus on some other things. I find my role as a functional practitioner um, to try to balance and optimize hormonal health, uh, nutrients, gut health, detoxification, and um, address chronic infections. And that's it. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Phaedra. Um, next up, Steve, please introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, I'm Steve Swanson, former NASA astronaut, now working at Boise State University. As a NASA astronaut, I did three space missions, two on the space shuttle, both of them to the International Space Station. They last about two weeks. And then I did a long duration one, which is about six months, launching from Kazakhstan on a Soyuz rocket. And last thing I said, about six months and uh, had lots of isolation in that period. And Steve, what's your connection with Steamboat? Oh, I grew up in Steamboat, went to school in Steamboat. So that's my connection with Steamboat. Great, thank you. Rebecca, please introduce yourself to our audience. 
Um, my name is Rebecca Williams, and I am a um, personal trainer and group fitness instructor. And um, alongside my husband, we own Mountain Fit, which is um, a new fitness studio in town. We were open for about six weeks before we had to close um, due to the coronavirus. Um, at Mountain Fit, our main focus is community and how we can give back to our community. So when we created our business model, um, we really focused on partnering with nonprofits in town and supporting um, all people in our community and making fitness accessible to them. So we focus on, um, we have about 55 group fitness classes a week when we're open. Um, we have a team of 19 instructors and personal trainers who work with us, a nutritionist, and we also have some physical therapists on board who help um, us create collaborative care so we can really um, prevent injury and help our clients get stronger. So we're excited to share with you guys today and appreciate the invite. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, Steve, this first question is for you. Um, the stay at home order has meant that individuals and families in our community are isolating. So um, first part of the question, could you tell us about your own experience in isolation um, at the space station? And then also as a follow up, what are some what were some of the harder parts of that? And how did you handle it? Sure, it starts off with two weeks of quarantine in Baikonur, which is in Kazakhstan. This is on a long duration mission. And uh, so you're really, that's very similar to what we're doing now, where you're with a small group of people, you can still go outside, you can do things like that. Um, I can still work out on a regular basis. And I have that, so it's very similar to what we're doing at this moment. But uh, when, you go, when you launch, you go to the space station, it becomes very different at that time, because now you are stuck in a, building say or a, a, a home that has uh, five other people in it and you're going to live there for the next six months and you're not going to leave you're not going to go outside you're not going to do anything else but live inside that that place and work there and so that takes a lot of uh, training and uh, and I guess uh, mindfulness I'm going to use that term I've heard that a lot that's a great way of putting it uh, to overcome some of those issues that you go through during that time period as for what was really hard uh, for me, it depends uh, on each person, of course, what was the hardest thing. Uh, the first is uh, being disconnected from your family and your friends. And that you have to figure out a way to keep in touch with them. And luckily, NASA did a really good job of uh, keeping us connected to people. We could make phone calls. We had email. Uh, actually, we could call people. They couldn't call us, which is kind of nice. And, uh, and then we uh, also did a video Skype with uh, people, my, at least my family, once a week. And I actually had a Facebook page, which I could communicate with a lot more people during that time period too, and that helped me out keeping in touch. And then the other things, uh, uh, just staying, uh, not being able to go outside was very difficult, but we had a good view of Earth. We got to look at a lot, like a picture of it is right behind me right now. And uh, that was really nice. It helped keep me uh, sane, I think, and, and, and working out, but it wasn't the same workouts as I would get here on Earth. I couldn't go outside and run. I was always on a treadmill or uh, something like that, or a stationary bike. So it wasn't that same idea. But uh, the biggest thing, I think, for me to keep myself sane through this difficult part was actually just be staying busy. I worked just really hard. I worked 12-hour days, and that helped me through that, that whole process. And, and, uh, and I think that definitely gave me the uh, ability to get through this long uh, time frame without really being connected to a lot of family and friends. Thank you, Steve. Um, Next up, um, I'm going to ask this question of uh, Kristen, Phaedra, and Rebecca. So let's start with Kristen. Um, what are your observations about this time? Um, and what do you recommend to people in terms of taking care of themselves and the people around them? So Kristen, you're up first. Yeah, Lisa, and I think the first thing is that, you know, it's kind of cliche, but you have to put your own oxygen mask on first. And I truly believe that, especially for parents right now. Um, the reality for all of us is that our stress and anxiety is contagious. So we have to do the things we can do to take care of ourselves so that we can be in the best position to support the people around us. And in my house, what that has looked like, I've been referencing this quote quite a bit um, from President John F. Kennedy, where he noted that the word crisis in Chinese is made up of two symbols. One of those symbols means danger and the other means opportunity. So we have really been trying to focus throughout this about find the opportunity. 
where is the opportunity? Is it perhaps there's an opportunity for extended time with your family, time to start a new behavior, to get fit, time to reflect on what's really important to you. And this can be really difficult if you are a small business owner or a restaurant owner. It can be difficult to find the good in this situation if you know somebody who's suffering from the illness. But I truly believe that finding the good is not a luxury, it's a necessity. And it's what gives us hope, it is what makes us, what makes human beings different than other species on the planet in times of difficulty. And it may take some effort, but there is good there, whether it's time to snuggle with your kid on the couch, um, maybe for the first time ever, you're home for dinner at night if you're a restaurant owner. Maybe it's time to focus on a part of your business that you've never had time to focus on before. But I think when we can channel our energy into finding the good and focusing on the opportunity, it not only helps our mental health, but it helps, and Phaedra can talk about this more than me, but I think it helps boost our immunity as well. Thank you, Kristen. Um, yeah, so Phaedra, what would some of your recommendations be to people in terms of taking care of themselves and their families? Well, also some observations I've had to go along with what Kristen has said is that um, I've seen some people be very thankful that they have this time to regroup and they're finding the silver linings despite um, the isolation. Um, I know for myself, it has been mostly good if we take out some of the homeschooling. That's been the biggest challenge. And part of that is I just had to let go of how much I was going to be able to have my child get done and be okay with whatever she is going to do. Um, some people are struggling for sure. And um, I spoke with Angela Melzer who owns Minds in Motion and she's seen some people who are having a really hard time, especially people who live alone. And um, those people, have you know it's harder for them to find connection to make connection um i applaud all that especially like mountain fit and rockta and all of the other communities that have of uh, who have tried to incorporate connection amongst um, the community and offering their services for free which has been really incredible for people um i try to you know the more i get sucked into news the more disgruntled and depressed, I feel. Um, so I try to limit news. I try to do things that keep my mind off of that. I, I've painted three rooms. So doing projects, doing hobbies um, can also be great ways to distract yourself from the monotony of what we're experiencing. Going for walks. I don't know how many times we've walked around the circle um, in various forms, whether it's been on a scooter, a hoverboard, running, biking. All of those things have just to clear the, the mental space of being in your house too long. And thankfully, hopefully we're turning the corner on weather because that's been one of my biggest buggers lately is I don't want to go outside if it's 30 degrees and snowing. So. Thank you, Phaedra. Rebecca, how about your observations and recommendations for people? Yeah, so I've... Um, I had the privilege to connect with so many people um, through our live stream classes and it's been really eye-opening for me and it's been reaffirming as I've dealt with my own struggles um, after just having to close a brand new business and you know a lot of changes for us we have a six and eight year old at home and so we're like Phaedra dealing with homeschooling and so many things trying to happen at once and change. Um, one thing I've really noticed consistently is that a lot of people are having really good days and really bad days. Um, and one of my friends said she almost feels like she should be diagnosed with bipolar because she, her swings are so intense. And as soon as she identified that, I quickly realized that I have felt the same. Um, you know, I can start a day and it can be like awesome and good. And then at three o'clock, it's like I'm down in the dumps and really struggling. And um, what I've been encouraging a lot of our members and clients and people doing classes is to really acknowledge where you're at in each piece. Um, 
And for me, that's mean, that has meant opening up more about my emotions and how I'm actually feeling and kind of identifying my own struggles. And I seem to do much better if I can say, okay, I'm in this funk and here it is. And I say it to my family. My kids know like, hey, mommy's struggling because whatever it is, whether I know or not. And I've seen my kids start to do that too. I know there was one day last week that my son opened up his laptop to start school and he just put his head down on the laptop and he's like, I can't do it again. I just can't do it today. And I was so proud of him for acknowledging that emotion. And I think that's the same thing we need to do. And when we address that, we really try to change our route and, and seek out our friends and our family and and be open because we're all in it. Um, you know, you might see us on a class like cheering you on and counting you down, but we are struggling just the same as everybody else. Um, and along that, I've kind of encouraged people to let go of what was, especially in fitness, what was your routine? None of us are going to maintain that same routine that we had. Um, it, I think it's unrealistic to think that we're going to work out the exact same. Maybe we're working out more now or more effectively. Maybe we're working out less, but we're finding that balance and we're taking, I think, each day in stride. So I think the biggest thing I'm seeing is just these these swings and just trying to address them and, um, you know, acknowledge it so we can just continue to be healthy and as healthy as possible. That's great. Thank you. Um, Steve, um, you mentioned this, but um, I think how in right now, what you're going through with COVID isolation, how does that compare to kind of that space station experience? Yeah, definitely there's some similar similarities and differences. One thing that's the same, I think, is the having to uh, stay connected to people who are not near you or not in the same house that you are. And that's something that we really worked on and I'm still doing that now. You're trying to reach out again to more people. Uh, just, you know, from the left we have FaceTime and, and, you know, Skype and Zoom and all these kind of things to help us do that. And I think that's wonderful. I think we should use that more and more as we, we go through this process because it really helped me on space station. But that's something that's really similar. The different thing is uh, I think one of the biggest ones is besides going, you not being able to go outside and work out, which is big for me though, is food. The food on the station was the same thing over and over again. It wasn't very good. And that was really difficult for me to handle over this long period of time. And, but here, uh, luckily, you know, we can make new food. We can go to the grocery store, we can get takeout. So it's the food is so much better. And it, I guess that uh, uh, helps me get through a lot of different things. Uh, just thinking about like, hey, what can we do different for dinner tonight kind of things? And we'll talk about it and make that something that's, uh, I don't know, we, we kind of get creative together kind of aspect of it. That's something I couldn't do on Space Station. So I think that's any little thing like that to help out. Uh, it's new and different that you don't normally get to do. I think that's kind of fun. Thanks, Steve. Um, next up, I wanted to ask um, each of you, um, we're, we're all tapping into virtual programming these days, um, whether it's, you know, touring a museum in Europe or, um, you know, taking a class online. Um, so I wanted to ask uh, Rebecca, Kristen, and Phaedra again, um, what types of virtual programming or, you know, telehealth are you guys offering at this point and how can people access the programming? So Rebecca, let's start with you. Okay, so we have um, a couple of different things that we're doing to provide for our community. Um, one of our big things we had to decide when we first um, had to shut our brick and mortar doors was um, if we wanted to charge people for classes. And we went back to kind of our mission statement that I alluded to when I introduced myself that we want to be here for our community. And um, when I started seeing so many people losing jobs and struggling financially or being stressed financially, we decided to go to um, all free classes. So we're offering, um, I think this week we have over 30 live stream classes. Um, all of those are free. We do have an area where you can donate if you would like to, if that's you know a good choice for your family. Um, so we um, also focus on offering a variety of classes that are good for different levels. So we have mat Pilates and a beginner yoga style class for people who are just getting back into working out. We've had basic weights. And then we have bar and um, high intensity classes. So we're trying to have something for everybody. Um, we are also um, offering virtual personal trainings. So we've kept a lot of our personal training clients. Um, that is our only paid service that we have right now. And so as we do our live stream classes, we're recording as many as we can. So people can sign up for a live stream class through our website. Um, if you go to our schedule, you'll see it and it'll take you to MindBody. 
And the way it works is you'll sign up for a class and then 15 minutes before the start of the class, you get an invite to Zoom to join that class meeting. And then we also post daily two to three videos to our website. So we take, like today I'll teach at noon a bar class. I'll teach it live stream, record it simultaneously. We post it so you could do the workout I did earlier in the day at any time that you'd like. And we have, um, I think about 70 videos we've recorded since we had to close our doors. And um, that is also free to our community. And then the other thing that we're doing is we have a, a kind of private Facebook group that anybody can join into and it's the Mountain Fit community page. And there we post um, information about our classes, but we also just share. Um, we have like journaling going, we have people who are doing daily journals and posting for accountability. Um, we share nutrition stuff, meal plan. We have all of our instructors kind of working together to help put stuff on that page. But um, the whole focus, and when you join the page, you actually have to agree to this, is um, that it's about positivity and encouragement, that there's no political stuff. It is a truly, you can go to that page and know you're going to get something uplifting. And we have our blogs on there as well. So that's kind of where we're at right now. I'm just trying to encourage everybody to come out and try something and accommodate it so you can do it at home as well. Thanks so much, Rebecca. Kristen, how about you? Thanks, Lisa. And I just have to say, Rebecca, I think it's awesome what you guys are doing. And that's one of the things that I feel like is so uplifting for me is to see what so many people in this community are doing to be there for each other. And I think it's really incredible. In terms of online programming, I feel like I was pretty lucky because I'd been offering online courses for parents and corporations and teachers for years, so as well as webinars. So that wasn't a place that I had to kind of reinvent the wheel. Most recently, I've been offering a lot of webinars around helping people build resilience by understanding how their brain responds to stress how to focus on things that they can control to offset those waves of anxiety that Rebecca mentioned easier earlier, and also how to stay connected and how to stay positive. And we were lucky to be able to partner with the chamber last week to offer a free webinar for Route County residents, which was really great and very interactive and a lot of fun to do. And then I think a lot of people as Phaedra mentioned, have been struggling with parenting in this time. And how do we navigate trying to work from home, run our business, manage our kids' online learning, and just the fact that they are here all the time. <laughs> and so beginning of May, we're going to be offering an online parenting course. Um, and I think we're going to do that live just so we can really uh, cater it to what's going on and make it relevant and timely for what parents are facing today. And then in addition, I've been offering a variety of different weekly themed series on my Instagram page, on my Facebook page, offering tips around mindful parenting during COVID, um, putting structure to your day during COVID, managing sibling relationships during COVID. So trying to get as much information out there as I can uh, to, be, to be as helpful as possible for people who need it right now. Thank you, Kristen, very much. Um, Phaedra, how about you guys at Minds in Motion? Um, we did start doing, all of us started doing virtual visits. <clears throat> so myself and Grace Charles, who's the naturopath, are doing virtual visits. Um, and all the therapists are doing virtual visits. They will see people if it's an emergency in person with the restrictions that everybody wears a mask and only one person at a time in the waiting room. and you know, making sure everybody is safe. But if there is a true emergency, we will see people in person. But most visits are done online via Zoom. Um, there are group therapy sessions, I think, three times a week where you don't have, you can sign up very shortly beforehand. And those are $20 a session. Um, and you're with a group talking about what's going on. What are you struggling with? You know, just this group have some ideas of how to work together, how to connect. Um, we have also tried to get out the word that we do have a scholarship program, um, that if you are struggling financially, you do need to see somebody. We do have a scholarship program available um, to help 
mitigate some of the cost of therapy or medical sessions. Um, so that's available too. And I think Angela is offering a 30 day structured guided meditation course online. Fantastic. It's, it's amazing what's out there when you start to look. So thank you. Um, so, um, and we've, uh, touched upon this, but, um, do you have any advice? Um, and I mean, ask each of you this, um, to people who are really struggling just to take care of themselves, you know, maybe their focus is on their kids or, you know, I have elderly parents who live, uh, far away. Um, you know, they're, they, um, their minds about helping everyone else, but they maybe personally are struggling with, you know, fitness, nutrition, health, mental health. What would be some of your recommendations for how they could um, kind of take care of themselves? So let's start um, with Kristen. Sure. You know, I think one of the things that happens with anxiety is um, it can feel paralyzing which can make it be feel very difficult to take care of yourself from a fitness and nutrition, that kind of standpoint. And one of the things that anxiety feeds off of is uncertainty. And I can't think of a more uncertain time than right now in terms of what our future looks like. So number one, anxiety is completely normal. And you should be feeling anxious right now at times. And often I think we beat ourselves up for feeling this way, or I should feel differently. But those waves of anxiety are completely normal. I think one thing that can be helpful is to try to distinguish between what anxiety is protective and what anxiety is just reinforcing your stress and making you miserable. So an example of protective anxiety would be you know, when you go to the store and you put on your mask and you are sure to wash your hands after and all that kind of anxiety around going into those places is protective. It's likely keeping us healthy. It's making sure we stay a safe di distance from people. But the where we can get in trouble with anxiety is when we just get constantly caught up in those thoughts, those worries, those ruminations about what the future holds. What if this happens? What if that happens? And the reality is we just don't know. So to try and notice that thinking and find ways to bring ourselves back to the present uh, for the, the unnecessary anxiety, I would say, can be really helpful. Another quote, I'm the quote lady today. <laughs> Another quote that I've been talking about a lot is um, from Pastor Chuck Swindle, which is life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. We can't control that 10%, but we can control the 90%. And for me, mindfulness helps me to do this a lot, to notice when I've been triggered by something, when those negative thoughts are happening, um, when that anxiety wave is coming, and then integrating some simple practices, which are often just a few breathing techniques to bring my system back into balance, um, to balance my sympathetic and narrow and parasympathetic nervous system so that I can respond thoughtfully to whatever's happening rather than just reacting in a way that often can make things worse. Thank you, Kristen. Um, Phaedra, would, what would you tell people who are struggling right now to take care of themselves? Um, yeah, I think, well, and I would say that we all have moments, um, like Rebecca said earlier, there, it could be within each day, we all have moments, or it could be one day is good and the next day is bad. And what I tell people is not to focus on the bad. You know, that's, that sounds so ridiculously simple. And I do that every day in my own head. If I am starting to do this repetitive perseverating on, oh, well, I'm not busy, so that must mean I'm not a good physician. I'm not doing my job correctly. I have to snap out of that and I have to change that pattern of thinking before it really takes over. Um, and I tell that to people a lot too, is that, you know, we have to look at the small victories. You know, if you went out for a five minute walk today, that's better than what you did yesterday, which was not leave your house and not take off your pajamas. 
So we have to celebrate the small things, the small accomplishments. You're not going to go from being scared of the outdoors to running a marathon before this is over. You know, it's not going to convert rapidly. You have to take these small baby steps. And um, that's true in everyday life, but it's more that awareness of it is much more heightened now that we have to just be okay with the small things. Um, and maybe that will change our whole kind of perspective as humans, you know, that we can be grateful and find gratitude for those small things. So I talk about gratitude a lot. I talk about just making small changes. I could be, you know, Pollyanna and say, it's so easy. You just get out and exercise. But I have, you know, I've spoken to patients who are afraid to go outdoors and I say, just open your front door and stand in the doorway. Put a mask on if you need to. Just stand there and breathe in the, you know, breathe in the fresh air. You're, it's okay to be outside. So meeting somebody with where they are and helping them make those small steps is what I end up doing a lot. Thank you. Steve, do you have any advice? Yeah, I'll tell you what, what kind of works for me is, is when I have a list of things to do for the day and some of them I don't really like to do, what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of give myself rewards. If I get this one done, I'll get to do something that's really good that I like to do. And so I'll work my schedule kind of that way to help me get through the day. And then I like to definitely echo what uh, Kristen and Pedro are saying, because I agree 100% about uh, first, you know, Concentrate on the positive. Uh, when you get something done, maybe that thing you didn't like to do, but it feels good to get it done because you did something really productive. You didn't really want to do it, but you got you finished it. You got it done. You got to be proud about that. Be happy about that, and kind of and kind of make that the, the important part. The thing you did, you got it done. And, and Christian's saying about you know living the moment a little bit. I think is really true too. You know you can't be worried about all these other things going on in life that you can't control. Just worry about what you can control and do and concentrate on that. And uh, I think that helps me, as I did on the space station at least, because that's all I could do is do the tasks they've given me, work on them, do them well. A lot of times I didn't like them, but I knew I, if I, I get this thing done, I could go look out the window or something like that. So that's the way I would get through all those kind of things. Thank you, Steve. Rebecca. So, um, you know, I've worked with a lot of clients over the past um, couple of weeks, and I've, I've had a couple, a group of things that I've been kind of advising them. Um, one is to address the bad habits you've picked up. What I saw a lot with my clients um, really quickly into this is that, and myself included, we are drinking more alcohol, going through more wine at night because you just, you're at home and you feel like that's what you should do. Um, eating way more sugar. And so I've been encouraging them to, what is a bad habit that you've picked up that you know is not supporting your immune system, your ability to get good sleep, um, your emotional, mental energy. Um, just using alcohol as a good example, um, you know, alcohol is a natural downer and a depressant. And if you already struggle with depression, drinking alcohol is not going to help you in this time. And so I've really encouraged a lot of my clients and um, I have myself just completely stopped drinking at all during this just to support my own mental health as much as I can. Um, so whatever that bad habit is, um, I also am saying ditch the TV. Like we're getting enough news, just turn it off. We don't have a TV at our house, so it's a little easier for me. But I'll have friends say, I saw this on the news and I'm so thankful that I can't. I'm seeing enough by following the pilot and that's kind of all I'm watching. And um, you know, my kids can still access Netflix, but I think it was one of the best decisions we've made to cut out some of that anxiety, especially in the evening, if you like to sit and watch the news and then try to go to bed with all that anxiety and stress in your mind, um, that's not gonna help. Um, the other thing that I've kind of stressed is whenever I have um, clients come to me, uh, you know, during normal times and they're trying to lose weight or get in shape, um, there's so many roadblocks. So we have happy hours, we have birthday parties, we have social events, we have the break room at work that's full of donuts. This is one of your few chances that you don't have these constant obligations and invites. And so, you know, this is a great time to drop the alcohol, to drop the sugar, to focus on eating well and really taking care of yourself and creating new routines. So almost like we can reimagine um, the way we operate and the way we function a little bit and dial in and take advantage of it. Because I can't imagine any other time where we would have this few amount of social events and the social happy hour zooms I have had I've just filled up a wine glass with LaCroix and ice and I feel just as awesome as they do so 
um, those are the things we've been focusing on a lot. Great, thank you. Um, let's see, um, Rebecca, I'm gonna go back at you about this and everyone's kind of talked about this, but what does um, exercise do for us mentally and emotionally? And then how much exercise is enough to kind of get that, that effect? So um, my answer during this time would maybe be a little bit different than normal. Um, right now, any amount of exercise is going to help you. If you take one lap around your block and you're outside for five minutes, I can guarantee you you're not going to regret that five-minute walk. Um, I would recommend a goal of 30 minutes a day of some kind of physical activity, um, even if it's um, as simple as meditation followed by a light walk because that's what's appropriate for you that day or if you do a high intensity class, um, whatever it is, I would try to get 30 minutes in a day, um, particularly alone. So those of us with kids who are surrounded by little people <laughs> all day long, um, my one hour a day that I'm working out is the only time I'm essentially getting to be alone out of my whole day. And so they kind of know now that if I shut the door to our garage, which is my workout zone, that that is mommy's time. And um, I've worked to protect that a lot. And so I think that that's really important. So any exercise to answer that is good. Um, I would definitely just work on staying active and keep moving. Um, there's so much research that supports that physical activity reduces anxiety. Um, it helps with depressed moods. It can boost. It's a natural booster. It's going to energize you, but it's going to make you feel better emotionally and physically. Um, and really can also enhance your self-esteem. And so those days that, you know, your jeans might have felt a little tighter because all you've worn is pajamas for the last couple of weeks, um, that natural um, release of endorphins is going to really help with how you feel um, about yourself, how you handle your relationships within your day. Um, and then, you know, exercise also helps us just to relax a bit. You know, when you finish that um, exercise time, often we feel a little bit more relaxed, a little less on edge because we've had positivity essentially in our in our lives for that time because we didn't use news. We were hopefully not thinking about everything else going on. So there's just so much research that shows that any movement is going to be so beneficial to us. And I think that is why we're seeing such huge numbers on live stream classes, because um, I feel like once you do it once, it's almost like an addiction that it's like, okay, I can feel better and healthier emotionally and physically. And that's the good kind of addiction we want during this. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, let's see. Um, oh, I skipped a question. So sorry. <laughs> um, what we and you guys have mentioned this, but um, what is the importance of um, or how important is it to set a, some sort of routine or schedule? So um, let's start with Kristen on that one. You know, going back to what we've been talking about, what Steve talked about quite a bit is I think the routine and the schedule right now is something that you can control. So again, anything, anytime we can focus on what we can control, that's going to offset a lot of the stress and anxiety around this. Uh, that routine gives us a sense of normalcy. It is calming and reassuring, especially for kids. When kids don't know what to expect, their typical response is resistance because there's some uncertainty there. So when you can establish a regular routine, then they, they know what's happening next. You see less anxiety on their part and a lot less resistance. So I think that's a huge one. And it's huge for us too. Just, you know, getting up in the morning, showering, maybe getting dressed fully, not just shirt, but also real pants, not pajama bottoms, although I have been known to do that long before COVID. Uh, but I, th I think that piece is huge. But we also need to recognize that our routines may look different right now. And to be able to alter our expectations, both for, especially around productivity, I think both for ourselves and for our kids. I've been, in a lot of the corporations I've been working with, there's this idea that I should be able to get just as much done now working from home as I did working in the office. Well, of course not. That's ridiculous. You're not being interrupted six times a day by 
you know, a five-year-old who wants a snack or a 14-year-old who's looking for his charger or batteries for his Game Boy remote. There's a lot of things that are getting in the way of that productivity. So to be able to be a little bit flexible, give ourselves some grace in terms of what we can get done within that routine and give our kids a little bit of grace as well, because this is difficult for them as well. There's a lot there's a lot they're trying to process, a lot they're trying to navigate, and we need to be compassionate and, and give them a little grace in terms of what our expectations of them are as well. Thank you, Kristen. Phaedra, what would you add about the importance of schedules and maybe tips for setting schedules? Well, I, as a, a for myself, I notice, you know, like, this is my pattern. I am a go to bed at 11, wake up at seven sort of person. So luckily in my normal life, I am able to make my schedule. So I don't have, you know, I make my schedule so I don't have to be at work until nine. So I still kind of follow that same plan right now. Of course, not every single day, but most days. And yeah, I pretend, okay, Saturday, I sleep in until eight, 8.30, you know. But the days that I get up, at 7, 7.30, exercise, shower. I am, I have set my mind, I have a, I should say, I have a mindset of being more productive, more in tune with the day. I can, I can get more done. I'm more efficient. Um, it also sets up my day so that I don't want to just eat garbage all day either. I have a more positive outlook and we'll get to the food stuff later, but, um, that's what I look at is it just keeps me on routine. I, you know, I continue my fast until 9, 10 in the morning. I, so the more that I stick with my regular routine, the more that I stick with the habits that I have established for my own health. Thank you. And Steve, you mentioned quite a bit about the importance of schedules. So based on your experience, especially um, in space, um, what, you know, why is it important and, and what, what would you suggest people do to kind of find that routine? Well, space, it was definitely important for us. And what it really did for me, though, is it just kept me busy. I mean, and that's me, you know, did my mind couldn't wander and think about all the negative parts. It was just getting the work done. And then the, the few times I had that were not busy, it would be good things going on. I could look out the window and all that stuff. So it kept, I think, my uh, mind in a good place uh, just with that aspect of it. But one thing I noticed when I started this whole um, uh, self uh, or social distancing thing we got going on right now is that I started working from home, of course, and I uh, wasn't doing a good job like a transitioning to a work mode. Uh, and so I ended up having to do like as both uh, Kristen and Pedro were talking about is I had to get myself into that same mode. I did the same thing. Then, you know, I took, got up, took a shower, did all these kind of things. And that, hey, ate breakfast, did everything like I would do at a work mode. And then I just, and I set up a room with my, like an office and I would go into that and that helped me get into a work mode. And without that, I was having trouble doing that. And I find it interesting because that little bit of extra kind of routine that was my normal way of starting the day really helped me get going and, and being able to work better uh, at, at just doing the normal stuff. Thank you. Um, an, another question that we have gotten um, in many different forms from people in the community is just that kind of that feeling of loneliness that sometimes hits us. Um, we, most people, I mean, I think introverts maybe love this time, um, but I think for many people, there just comes this time where we crave um, community and connection. So I guess I want to ask you guys, um, what, how, how are you able to do that through, um, how can we do that? What are some tips um, so that people do feel connected? So let us start, um, Phaedra, with you. Um, well, not that we want to encourage excess alcohol intake, but definitely virtual happy hours, whether it's a sober happy hour or there's a cocktail, um, but just having that connection with friends. The Zoom exercise classes are great to be able to see other people exercising. Um, so that's been really helpful. I think our neighborhood is busier 
we don't have a ton of kids in our neighborhood, um, but just watching people walk by and seeing neighbors that you ha haven't spoken to all winter um, because of just that winter hibernation, you, you don't talk to anybody, but everybody's walking the same circle. So it's nice to be able to um, just see the people in your neighborhood um, coming through, doing their laps, um, family FaceTime. Um, I had a great call with my sister-in-law this weekend. Um, his, so those are all the, the things that, those are the things that I need. There are people that need more, I'm sure, but that's been sufficient for me. Thank you, Phaedra. Um, Kristen, how, what are some tips and ideas for creating those connections that we crave? Yeah, I think for us, a lot of it has been around thinking about people who don't have family living with them, who may be living alone. And actually, my husband asked the kids the other day, he said, who is one person that uh, you haven't been in touch with since this all started that you might be concerned about? And that kind of caused us to, to stop and think about who might be needing some support right now. Um, I have a sister who lives alone, and so we've been trying to be really intentional about doing game nights with her, virtual game nights via FaceTime, things like Trivial Pursuit or Yahtzee or things like that that they can engage in together. And these acts of kindness, I think, are huge both for our mental health, for managing anxiety. They provide hope. And it was interesting, one of the things that Charlie came up with, my son, when, my, when Kenny asked that question, was one of his teachers. He was worried about that she lived alone, her kids were far away, and so we started, the kids started baking breads, and we've been giving those to neighbors, friends, um, people who either are living alone or we just want to give a care package to. And I think it's, there's something about doing that that makes you feel part of a community. It's really hard to be, be, to be helpful and also feel miserable at the same time. Generally, when we're engaged in those acts of kindness or we're trying to be helpful, that feels good. So it creates kind of a win-win situation and we can use those acts of kindness to really connect as a community. Thank you. Rebecca, how about you? What are some ways that we can connect with people? Um, so I would, you know, piggyback on the Zoom calls have been great. Um, my family, I'm one of four kids, so we have a very large um, family across the country. And so we planned a family um, talent show. <laughs> and so there's probably, I think there's 14 nieces and nephews and the kids planned all day these little talent shows and we displayed it. My mom even did a little play on the piano and stuff. And um, I think it was really healthy for my mom who, um, you know, is in that older group and stuff too. And, and it was great for all of us. And, and was, it's cool because we've never all lived in the same town in our adult life, but here we're doing these things during the stay at home that we would have never done before. And that's been really fun. Um, I have a standing date night with my girls and I act like I'm going out with the girls and I go into our guest room and I shut that door and I'm like, nobody bothers me. Mommy left the building and it's my one time that I try to get an hour to talk to my girlfriends and usually it's a lot of laughter and some real conversations. Um, I also have been trying to encourage some of that for my kids. Um, the socialization, even at their age, they're sick of us sometimes <laughs> and as they should be. So, you know, our kids have been doing a lot of FaceTime calls with cousins and friends and, and even letting them shut their door and just be real with their friends. Um, I love he overhearing it because it just kind of gives you this feeling that we're all in it together. Um, and the other one that I would kind of just touch on is those, that random acts of kindness that was mentioned. You know, I've had days where I go to my front doorstep and there's a little gift waiting for me or a card. And those things go such a long way to just lift your spirits. And so we've also been trying to pick up some of those habits and, you know, simple things of dropping a card off is um, easy and stuff. And so I think there's a few things we just have to be a little more creative. That's great. Thank you. Um, and Steve, you mentioned this too, um, but what did you do to stay connected when you were away for six months? And, you know, how does that, how could that translate to this COVID-19 period? Very similar to what people are already doing right now, I think. Uh, you know, it's definitely just being in contact with 
your friends and family. It's what's really important. And that's what, it helped us tremendously to get through. And I'd probably make uh, two phone calls today. I said we worked 12 hours a day. So as soon as that day ended, I would try to make a couple phone calls just to, you know, I'd go through a list of these people that I had written down their phone numbers. I knew I wanted to contact on a regular basis. And I would just kind of keep working my way through the list and talking to people, seeing how they're doing. And it was always fun just to talk, talk to somebody. I really like that aspect of it. And the big other thing I did was uh, think about the Facebook page. You know, uh, sometimes I'm not huge on social media, but this was really fun for me because I would we would play games on it. We had, I did a picture of some place on Earth on the Facebook page, and everybody would have to try to guess where that was and stuff like that. And then we got jokes going back and forth about all sorts of things. And that just helped me tremendously. Just be able to, you know, as, as people talk about, just joke with some friends is so helpful just to get through these difficult times. Thank you, Steve. Um, so Phaedra, this question is for you. Um, it, is maintaining a balanced diet helpful during this stressful time or should we just pig out and eat everything we want to to make ourselves feel better? <laughs> Absolutely, just go crazy. Um, no, well, as we're talking, um, and Kristen's very aware of this too, our, and because she does, you know, she's studied the nervous system for years, but we have our fight or flight system. And so we're all in this period of fight or flight. And when we do that, we raise our adrenaline and then we need to combat that with um, cortisol. And cortisol comes in as a, you know, it's helpful in that moment of stress to release sugar, but it also triggers us to want to eat those comfort foods, the high fat foods, the pizza, the chips, um, the sugar. So um, I know that when I've gone to the grocery store, I've made sure that I had some dessert, but then I like had to rein myself in and say, okay, this time we're not buying quite as much dessert. So we all have to kind of regroup and break that cycle because what that that fatty food or that sugary food does is it triggers another stress response. And then you're caught in this vicious cycle of, oh, I'm stressed, so I need to eat bad food, but then my body's in stress and, it, and you keep going around and around and around. So you really have to break that cycle. It, and it goes along with the other mindful te techniques, whether it's breathing, meditating, but something to keep that level of bodily stress down. So. If we have higher cortisol, we'll put on more weight. So we'll get that, that belly, um, the belly fat that nobody wants. Nobody wants the quarantine 15. So we really have to start looking at our habits and, um, get, and trying to break that cycle by eating healthier foods, fresher foods. Um, and so that's the big reason why we want to have a balanced diet because Yes, it, it just makes you feel worse, whether mentally, well, both mentally and physically. So it impacts your brain as well as your physical health when you are caught in that cycle of eating bad foods. Thank you, Phaedra. Um, Steve, um, obviously a virus or sick, sickness that would have affected all six crew members aboard um, the aircraft would have had a significant effect. So what protocols did you all follow to avoid getting sick? Um, I'm sure they're more extreme than what we're doing now, but, but could you explain those to us? Sure, the biggest thing we do is we are in quarantine before we go to space. So we hopefully don't take anything with us. And in, even the day of launch, you actually uh, take a, a, a bath and, and like uh, alcohol wipes and stuff like that to get every germ possibly off you before you get in the spaceship to launch into space. So that's our number one thing we do. We try not to take anything with us. And every piece of equipment that goes up has been cleaned thoroughly before it gets loaded in and sent up to space station. So that's a big thing. And also we will take, uh, once a week, we will clean the space station with antiseptic wipes and we'll wipe down everything we can. And so that's try to kill anything that it could, happily, could happen to be growing on, on board. And really, that's the biggest thing we can do because we can't really wash our hands on a regular basis like we do here on Earth, things like that. So, and things stay airborne longer in space. They don't fall to the ground, stuff like that. So we really can't stop a lot of those kind of things that you have on the space station. And it's all confined quarters. 
So we do it mostly with just the quarantine and keeping it as clean as we possibly can. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, Kristen, um, how can mindfulness help during this time? And what are some, you had mentioned simple, but simple things people can do every day to boost their mindfulness practice. Sure. Uh, am I unmuted? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, kind of building on what Phaedra was talking about, mindfulness is huge for offsetting those survival mechanisms in our brain that are triggered by stress and anxiety. So when we engage in mindfulness practices, we strengthen key structures in our brain that help us manage our emotions, create more positive emotions, and enhance our resilience in general. So a few things that I do every day and that I'm even more intentional about doing right now. The first starting in the morning is my morning ritual. I wake up in the morning, I go downstairs, I set my coffee to brew, and I pay attention to my breathing for about three to five minutes. It's not a long meditation, but what that does is it stimulates my prefrontal cortex, uh, which offsets all of that stress. It, it sets the tone for my day and creates an optimal brain state for me to respond to situations positively, for me to be productive, for me to have a great day. And I guess the counter to this, if you think about waking up to the alarm on your smartphone, and the first thing you do is dive into the day's headlines and the virus map and all of these other things, these badges and texts and emails, instantly those survival mechanisms are triggered and you start your day already in that fight or flight response. And it's very difficult to offset that. You either need a length of time, a workout, or some kind of mindfulness practice to bring you back into balance. So for me, starting the day that way is huge. I also integrate a lot of what I call micro mindfulness practices into my day. So something I'm doing right now is while I wash my hands, which I'm doing a lot of, um, taking some relaxation breaths while I wash my hands. So inhale to the count of four, exhale to the count of six. Repeat to get your full 20 seconds. That by lengthening our exhalation, we trigger a relaxation response in our brain. Again, calming all of that fight or flight stuff. I try to make time every day. Getting outside is a non-negotiable for the entire family. So some time to get present with this beautiful environment that we are so lucky to live in, to be here and not a lot of other places right now I'm so grateful for every day. I try to make my kids laugh every day. Laughter is huge for relieving stress. And finally, I end my day with a practice called Three Good Things, which is just uh, acknowledging three good experiences in your day. They don't have to be huge things, just little experiences. And I engage in that practice with someone um, via text. So I reach out to somebody who maybe could use the extra support right now. I set an alarm on my phone for 8 p.m. I label that alarm three good things. And I send my three good things to my friend who lives across the country. And then she responds with her three good things. Tons of great research around this practice in terms of boosting happiness, reducing depression, improving sleep. It's a great way to stay connected again during this time, and it takes about two minutes a night. So those are a handful of things that can make a big difference. Thank you so much. That's good stuff. <laughs> um, we are about out of time. So I'm going to skip to the last question and then give you guys an opportunity also to say something in closing. So the last question is, um, could you give us um, one thing that someone could do at home to take care of themselves? So we'll start with Rebecca. So um, obviously I feel strongly about working out from home. <laughs> and so what I would encourage you to do is find what makes you happy. So for me, a clean, organized space um, is my happy spot. If there's big clutter, I don't feel good because that's just not how I'm wired. So I clean my garage and people comment about how clean it is a lot <laughs> during my live stream classes, but I made a space that's for me. Um, and it, it's a space that makes me feel good to feel energized. It's clean and organized and um, I kind of protect that little space and 
I use that to, um, whether it's to do yoga or to teach my classes or just to take a minute away from my family and close myself in there. Um, whatever it is, um, find that little thing that really sparks your happy spot and then use that to create your space. Thank you. Um, let's see, Kristen, what would be one thing that you would suggest people do to uh, take care of themselves? I think a really great practice that I've used for years is to um, to think about somebody in your life who's had a positive impact on you in any way and write a letter to them explaining the impact that they've had on you. And then I really encourage people to take it a step further and arrange a FaceTime or a Zoom call and read that letter. It's an unbelievable, hugely powerful practice and a huge boost of happiness, both for you and, and for that person as well. And kids can do it too. Oh, cool, thank you. Phaedra, what, how about you? Oh, there's so many, there's so many things and how much, in so little time. Um, I'll just put a blurb out there in my medical brain. I mean, I love the exercise. I love going through stuff. I, I, that was a great idea that Kristen just said, and I would never have thought of that. Um, but in my medical brain, some things that I do to support myself and my health besides sleep and eating my veggies. So nine to 13 servings of veggies and a couple servings of fruit out there. But I also recommend, you know, and of course, of course, work with your own physician or medical provider on this, but vitamin C, vitamin D, um, vitamin A and zinc, and please ask your provider about specific doses. But those are some of the things that I use on a regular basis to help boost my immune system. There are many others um, that I work with specifically with each client, but um, those are, those are big um, immune boosters out there. And that was one question we didn't get to, but eating right too also boosts our immune system, correct? Absolutely. So we talk about um, the chemicals in food. So Polyphenols are a big um, thing that boosts your immune system in food. Um, and so the colorful foods, that's where, why we talk about fruits and vegetables a lot, and mainly vegetables more than fruit. Um, but the polyphenols in the vegetables are really helpful for supporting your immune system. Thank you. Um, Steve, what would be your advice or one thing that you would suggest someone could do um, during this time to take care of themselves? I would suggest scheduling in fun. I think a lot of times we get so caught up in a lot of other things we don't, I mean, you really make time for your fun. And then and, and and what we're living in today, you kind of have to be creative with your fun. And that's something that I think you come up with new games you could play in the house or whatever, and involve everybody in the family if you can, and do that kind of thing. And just and make sure it's scheduled and everybody gets to have a good time and laugh together and all that. I think that, that will help tremendously in the long run. That is such a good thing to remember. That's something we tend to forget. So thank you. So now we're at the end. So I'm going to let you guys each kind of share something from your heart, something that maybe you didn't get a chance to um, talk about. So Kristen, we'll start with you. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, I just want to say thank you for putting this on. And uh, again, I am so appreciative of everything that everyone in the community is doing to support each other, to help each other, to provide resources. And I feel so lucky to live in Steamboat right now, both for my ability to get outside and enjoy the beauty of nature, but also because of the people in this community that I'm surrounded by. So look out for each other, be kind to each other, and find the good where you can. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, Phaedra, what closing thoughts would you have? Um, it, it, I think it just sums up what we've talked about. Get some sunshine, have some fun, um, and again, appreciate the silver linings in um, each and every day and find that gratitude of what this experience can bring to us. I know it's hard for everybody, but we can always find um, the good and, and humans are adaptable. We will be able to, you know, we will be able to weather this storm and we will come out as newer, stronger human beings. And so. Thank you. Steve, how about some closing thoughts from you? 
Oh, thanks. Just thank you for having me. And I really learned a lot from, from Pedro, Kristen, and Rebecca. That was fantastic. So thank you all for doing that and being part of this. And one last thing I've really been trying to do, and I think it helps, is, you know, when you're in this close quarters with your family and you're spending lots of hours on uh, with them, just like on the space station, with a small group of people, and you lived a long time with them, you've got to be really considerate of other people's feelings. It's, uh, it's something that's easy to forget, but little things can, you know, cause irritation. So just always be mindful of what you say and try to be really considerate, and it will pay back dividends in the long run. Thank you, Steve. And Rebecca, we'll let you close us out for this morning. Yeah, thank you so much. This has been um, such a great opportunity. I've also loved learning from all of you guys. Um, I think one thing is um, really identify what new habit you have created during this time that you'd want to keep. You know, I think it's easy to focus on the challenges we're seeing, but you know, one thing our family's done is we play a family game night every single night, and that sometimes means our kids are going to bed later than they should, but I wouldn't change that for anything. It has been such a good, healthy thing for our family. So look at what those things are and try to embrace them. The other thing is our community has so many resources. And I have heard people say, you know, I don't want to go grab the free meals because we're really not, you know, financially needing it. But the bottom line is our community is coming together to provide resources. Maybe you just need a night off of cooking and you're going to take advantage of that meal. Um, for Mountain Fit, we could care less if you have a membership in another studio. We're providing this for our community and there's other businesses doing the same. So take advantage of the resources um, that are out there because I think it'll help pull us all in um, even closer than we already are. So I think we'll see a lot of positive good change come from this and keep finding those silver lining. Thank you guys so much. Um, I know my heart is full after listening to you. And again, um, you all remind us and represent what's so great about our community. So thank you. Um, and I would, um, I would like to add a quote. Um, I, for me, Brene Brown is kind of an inspiration. And so something I remind myself is talk to yourself like you would to someone you love. Because I think sometimes we, we get these negative thoughts and we need to talk to ourselves like we would to someone who um, needs support and love and appreciation. So thank you guys. Um, and you mentioned silver linings. We are publishing silver linings every day in the paper and online. So please, if you have a silver lining to share with the community, send those to share at steamboatpilot.com. Um, we'll be having a panel again on Friday at 1030. Um, there's a lot going on, so the topic is still be, to be determined, but hopefully you'll tune in then. Um, and um, again, I just thank everyone that has watched today. And, um, and I just, I hope everyone takes home some of this that they've learned today and puts it into practice. So again, thank you all for your time. Have a great day.